Isang maganda at mapagpalang umaga po sa ating lahat. Today is Wednesday, October 7, 2020, and we are back for another session of the Hashtag Unplug Webinar Series. So good morning po sa lahat ng nakatutok na ngayon sa ating programa, sa ating mga ka-unplug. Kumusta na po kayo? Nakapag-almusal na po ba? Hopefully nakapag-breakfast na po tayo para... Handang-handa na po tayo mamaya na makinig sa isa na namang exciting na topic sa umagang ito. And once again, magandang umaga sa mga early birds natin sa FB Live. Ayan, mag-ingay po kayo dyan. Sabihin niyo po kung saan kayo nanonood. Siyempre, kung wala pa po dito yung inyong mga kasamahan, aba, gisingin niyo na po sila at sama-sama po tayong mag-relax naman ng kaunti. Sabi nga po, ba self-care is not selfish. It is necessary. Kaya naman po, itag nyo na po ang inyong mga friendships, ang inyong mga kaburks, dabarkads, classmates, workmates, at uh, iba pang kasamahan dito sa ating FB Live. And syempre, share nyo rin po ang ating video para mas marami pa po ang makapakinig at matuto sa umagang ito. Well, as of this morning po, meron tayong 836 registered participants. So I hope on board na po tayong lahat. Time check, it's 10.02 in the morning. And welcome to Unplug. Relax, de-stress, and recharge using non-digital activities webinar series. And we are now on our second session entitled The Magic of Art Therapy. Learn how to chillax using art activities. O ba bongga? I am Cheryl Hermosa Ebron, the University Extension Associate and Training Coordinator of UPLB LRC. And yours truly will be your moderator for this session. And once again, just a few reminder, reminders, guys. Kindly keep your comments helpful and considerate to the speaker, uh, moderator, and to your fellow participants. And second, if you have questions, feel free to comment them down below our comment section box. They will be addressed by our speaker after the session. And please ask relevant questions as well. Okay. And then lastly, please do not forget to answer the evaluation form after the webinar. Hashtag Team LRC, our team will deeply appreciate your comments and suggestions. Help us to serve you better. Okay. The deadline of submission of responses will be until uh, 7 p.m. today. Okay. Kung kayo naman po ay hindi makakapanood ng live today dahil naka-mobile data o kaya naman po ay may equally important engagements po kayo nakasabay ng webinar na ito, don't worry po, we will upload all our sessions on our YouTube channel. Search nyo lang po yung UPLB Learning Resource Center. And as of now, we already have 410 subscribers. Ayan, maraming salamat po sa mga nag-subscribe. Mula po yan sa zero. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. At huwag kalimutang i-click yung notification bell para updated po kayo lagi sa ating mga videos. So, ha? And you can also watch the replay through our Facebook page. Actually po, our FB social community is still growing strong and right now we have reached a total of 25,000 followers. Ayan, maraming maraming salamat po sa mga nag-like, nag-share at uh, sumusubaybay sa LRC. At gamitin nyo rin po yung ating hashtag, yung official hashtag po natin sa webinar series na ito. It's hashtag unplug para madali po natin makita lahat ng ating videos and resources for this webinar series using that hashtag. Alright, handa na ba ulit kayo mga ka-unplug? G pa rin po ba tayo? Of course, G na G pa rin. So, let's start our session with a short uh, energizer. Okay? So, lagi nang umaaten ng ating webinar series, you know the drill. Sa mga ngayon pa lang po makakasubok, mandali lamang po ito. First, you have to open a new browser or a new window and go to www.menti.com and then use our key code. You can also see that on your screen. It's 2785583. And then answer the two questions there po. Okay? Also, let me copy the link po at i-post natin ito sa ating uh, comment section box para po makasunod naman po yung iba. Uh, sa ating menti.com. So, let me just open my Facebook. Alright. It's already posted there. Pwede nyo na pong i-click yan. And then, allow me to share my screen para makita po natin yung live results ng ating menti.com. 
Alright? So, ang una pong tanong ay, anong paboritong laro mo noong bata ka pa? So, meron po dyang patintero, bahay-bahayan, tagutaguan, Chinese garter, tumbang preso, luksong baka, jack stones, ano pa ba? Tex o holen? Ano yung huli? Hindi ko na matundaan. Ayan. Tagutago ang nasabi ko na, no? So, alin dyan yung pinaka-paborito mong laro? So, i-rank mo lamang yan, okay? So, I'm seeing on my screen, there are seven people already answering our question. Ayan, so keep it coming. Marami po sa inyo, ang una o ang pinaka-paboritong laro ay patintero. Wow! Napaka-active po ng ating mga, ano, no? Ng mga ating mga, nakaabot ang millennials dito, no? Sa mga ganitong laro. Ang Genji kaya, nakaabot din. Napakaswerte po no pag nakaabot ka ng mga larong ito nung bata ka pa. Ayan, bahay-bahayan ang sunod. Tapos tagutaguan. Ako actually ang favorite ko tagutaguan. Tagutaguan ng feelings. Char. <laughs> Joke lamang po. Ayan, patintero pa rin po. Tapos second po sa tagutaguan ay Chinese garter talaga naman. Kapag ka sa school po ano, talagang <laughs> nagiging ano flexible yung katawan mo at naabot mo yung pinakamataas na garter para lamang hindi ma-out. Ayan, pumapantay po ang bahay-bahay. Ayan, talaga naman. At, ayan, tagutaguan na ngayon. Overtake na ang bahay-bahay at patintero. May text o holen. O, ba? Diba? Sino sa inyo ang tinakot ni nanay na, sige, pag di ka tumigil dyan sa text, ilalaga ko yan. <laughs> Mga ganyang effect, no? Pero, ang sarap pong balikan. Alright. We are already 44. Nag answer paabutin ko lamang po ng 45. Kaya ba? Ayan, 45. Thank you so much for answering the first question. Ang nanguna po sa ating listahan ay bahay-bahayan, tagutaguan, at patintero. O, ba diba, bongga? Sana maabutan din to ng anak ko, yung mga larong ito. Okay, next question na po tayo. Ayan. Let us give uh, an idea of how do we uh, refer to art. What does art mean to you? Bigyan po natin ng idea ang ating resource speaker. Kung ano ba yung pagkakaintindi natin sa art. So para sa iyo, ano ba yung art? So sige, it could be one word, two word, or a phrase. For me personally, anything that is beautiful is an art for me and it inspires me a lot. Yan, yan ang art. Kaya po, pagka gumagawa kami ng mga pub mat sa aming page, somehow it's relaxing for both of us, kay Josh at saka po sa akin, kasi nagkakaroon kami ng break kahit pa paano. So, pag nakikita mo mga magaganda, you are more inspired, more motivated, and you feel more um, relaxed as well. Okay? I'm seeing here, or we are seeing on our word cloud, most of you guys refer to art as an expression. Oh, di ba? Ayan, self-expression, expression. Ayan, pinakamadami talaga yung nasa gitna. Uh, most of you refer to art or, uh, yeah, art as an expression. Creativity, feelings, passion, life, beautiful. Oh, di ba? Colors. Ano pa? Inspiration, creativity, beauty. Ano pa? Me. <laughs> You are an art. Yeah, we are all a, a work of art. Actually, a work of art in progress. <laughs> in progress tayo palagi. Ano pa? I'm seeing hormones free. Ayan, dami nagsasagot. Ha? 67, 68. Paabutin natin siguro na mga 80. Try natin mga 80. Ayan, ang daming sumasagot. Thank you so much. Keep it coming. Aba, sa gitna. Hmm. Hmm. Me. <laughs> I am an art. Yeah. Tama naman. Okay. Creativity, me, expression, passion, life. Ay, dumami na pala. 118, 124, 125, 26. Okay, 150 na. Yeah. <laughs> Talaga na hanggang 150. Maraming sumasagot ngayon. Talaga ba? Me yung sa gitna natin? What do you mean by me? Hmm. Okay. Pero nakikita natin creativity, me, expression, imagination. Yeah. Okay. Beauty. 142, 43. Sige po, keep it coming. Talagang me ang nasa gitna. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Self-expression. 149. 1. Talaga namang tumigil pa doon, di ba? O oh, sige, yan na po yan. Thank you so much, guys, for 
participating in our short energizer. So I hope gising na po tayo at talagang energized ng ating mga brain cells. So thank you so much guys for participating in our uh, energizer for today. And uh, we hope you, already, you are already energized to learn another way to relax, de-stress, and recharge for this session. Okay, so let us now go to the main part of our session. Allow me to introduce to you our speaker for this morning. So wala nang paligoy-ligoy pa, diretso na po tayo dahil talaga namang napakaganda po nang inihanda para sa atin, ng ating speaker for this morning. All right. So our speaker is an assistant professor at the Department of Development Communication at the Visaya State University main campus in Baybay City, Leyte. He teaches undergraduate and graduate courses in development communication and culture and the arts education. For many years, he held many roles for both stage and video productions as a scriptwriter, playwright, and director for technical art and overall direction. He holds a National Certification 3 on Events Management Services as a stage director and events organizer. In 2008, he was appointed as festival director of the first Binay Bayon Festival organized by the city of Bay Bay and is currently an active member of its festival technical committee. He is also a member of a national pool or the National Pool of Educators for Radio Drama and Stage Plays of the Philippine Association of State Universities and Colleges National Arts Festival. From 2002 to 2016, he was head of the visual arts section of the drama section from 2006 to 2007 of the VSU Culture and the Arts Center, or CAC. The special program in the arts, or SPA, of the Dept Ed by Bay City Division had him as their mentor and coach for visual arts, media arts, theater arts, and creative writing since 2013 up to the present. Aside from his work in the academe, he also paints, exhibits, and holds art workshops professionally. He is an active member of the International Watercolor Society Philippines and Philippine Guild of Watercolorists and the Visual Arts Association of Bye Bye City. In 2001, he is the founder and uh, organize, organization advisor of the Banaag Visual Arts Group of VSU. At present, he is a Doctor of Philosophy candidate at the UP or the, at the University of the Philippines, Los Banos, for his doctorate degree in development communication with extension education as Cognate. Here to share with us how to relax a bit using art activities, please welcome Professor Jude Noni A. Salas. Sir Jude, good morning. Good morning, Cheryl. Good morning, um, Ma'am Benj. Good morning, Sir Lester. And to our attendees, Sir Josh, good morning. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm so happy to share to you today uh, what I know about art making. How are you, Sir Jude? Saan ka ngayon? Uh, I'm now here in my office at the Visayas State University Department of Development Communication. And um, I'm actually uh, doing my work in preparation for the classes this semester. Mm -hmm. Your start of classes is when, Sir Jude? Uh, our classes started last October 5. Oh, okay, okay. October 5, this Monday. Okay. Sir yes. I just noticed, no, yung, yung background, ang ganda-ganda naman. <laughs> is that a painting of yours? Yeah, this is a, this is a big painting of mine. The, the size is 46 inches by 46 inches, roughly about four feet. Wow. And um, this is a painting of uh, a wave. This is an abstract impressionist uh, style of a wave. No? And this is entitled Wave One. The other painting, the partner of this painting, because this is a diptych, uh, meaning two paintings to, to create a, a big landscape. Uh, I, I just placed it in one corner of the room. Uh, I just used this one as my background uh, to, to give color to my background. Right, right now I'm wearing black t-shirt to be neutral for this presentation. So uh, this is my hobby, which I turned into a uh, professional uh, hobby 
No? So it's not an ordinary hobby that uh, we just do inside our house, but it's actually a hobby wherein uh, I also sell my paintings to, to collectors. Yes. So, sir, is this how you cope up or cope with uh, the pandemic? Kasi seven months tayong naka, ano, no, naka-quarantine since March. Is this how you uh, cope, cope with the, the pandemic that, ha- that is happening right now? Okay, that's a good question, uh, Ma'am Cheryl. Um, even before the pandemic, uh, the art that I'm practicing, the, the art-making practice that I'm doing actually helped me adjust in my, in my life, even there in UPLB. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was living alone in my apartment. Um, it was my first time to, to live in, in UPLB for, 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 for three years. And um, painting was my source of uh, inspiration to continue. And of course, uh, the inspiration in my studies and during my pastime, I, I, I use it uh, as a stress reliever instead of uh, going out and uh, going to the mall and etc. I just stay in my in my apartment. I, I don't even watch TV anymore. I after doing my readings for the different courses and assignments, I just paint and draw. Wow, sir. So, guys, excited na talaga tayo. So, sir. Um, Take it away, sir. You have now the Zoom space and we'll be happy to learn from you this morning. Yeah. So before I will uh, start in the discussion proper of my of my topic, um, I'm going to share with you my own uh, journey in this kind of in this kind of art world. Now, so um, you were asking me a while ago how I adjusted for the past seven months. Um, I was very lucky enough that I was able to return to my hometown before the pandemic lockdown started, and um, I was it was it was quite an unexpected event for all of us. I know, and most of us were stressed about it, and most of us were not able to understand what is this pandemic all about. Why why is there a lockdown? Why can't we go out? Why can't can't, can't we eat with our friends, play, or go to the mall, or do our the other things that we do outside our home. So if you are not a homebody, if you're not a person who is fond of staying at home, you will really be stressed. No? So, and especially most of us who are used to going to the office every day, um, it's difficult for us to adjust. Why do we have to work from home? And then most of the time, we are stressed because of this new schedule. And in the home, um, Some people, since they're used to going out or uh, trying to enjoy with their friends, they're not used to staying at home and just doing things that they don't normally do. So unless you have a hobby, um, the pandemic would not be a problem for you. So uh, on my part, my art actually gave me an alternative enjoyment uh, by not going out because my art has been practiced by me for even for a long time before the pandemic. It has been, I have been doing art. Um, uh, to give you a backgrounder, um, I, I, I had my formal training in, in art only during my college days, but my parents were very supportive of me. Uh, during my elementary days, I, I was enrolled in art workshops in high school. I was enrolled in a theater workshop. In college, I was I was able to participate and in a USAID funded uh, a long-term art workshop. No? so and and this experiences prepared me better to how to handle stress. So even when I was still a student, um, if ever there are so many stressful things when it comes to school requirements or uh, exams, and when exams do not do not give you something positive, you had low scores or, or you had forgotten your lessons. Um, during weekends, I'll pour my time. I'll, 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 I'll give my time to art. And at the same time, during my college days, art is not only a source of relaxation, but also a source of income. So I was not asking uh, allowance all the time from my parents because I was also earning from my art. So I was able to have my first city at the age of 17. 
So uh, I was actually the youngest in the group. No, I was the baby of the group during that time. But I was not insecure that I was the youngest. Actually, I was proud of myself that I was the youngest in the in that art art group. No, so um, that experience was carried until I became a teacher myself. And I always tell my students, don't stress yourself by, by just doing nothing inside your dorm or room, in your house. Think of something else. Ex release uh, the stress uh, with a hobby or something that you can do with your hands. No? So um, sometimes people say, uh, I'm so bored. There's no such thing as a boring time if there's something that you can focus on. So I'm really thankful for UPLB Learning Resource Center for inviting me and for letting me share my personal experience. I have to be very clear that uh, I'm not a psychiatrist. I am a teacher. I am an artist, but I'm not a psychiatrist. But through my experience as a teacher and through my experience as an artist, I will be able to share to you my personal experiences. No? So uh, the lecture or the discussion that I'm going to share to you is from my personal experience. No? So we are, I'm not afraid that I will be charged of plagiarism or copyright infringement for this topic because these are all uh, derived from my more than 30 years of being a, an art teacher and a teacher in communication. So um, let's start. So I'll give you now, uh, I'll, I'll share to you now my formal presentation. So I prepared an audiovisual presentation. Um, can we play it now? Good day everyone! Today I'm going to share to you the magic of art therapy. Learn how to chillax using art activities. So, what is the aim of art therapy? Art therapy's aim is to manage behaviors, process feelings, reduce stress and anxiety, and increase self-esteem. Art therapy through art making activities improves self discovery and help an individual acknowledge and recognize feelings that has been lurking in his or her subconscious. In almost 30 years of conducting art workshops for participants of all ages, I have identified 10 benefits of art making in improving one's emotional and psychological well being. Number one. It improves fine motor skills. Art making activities like drawing, painting, and sculpture encourage you to use your hands with control. It promotes muscle memory through regular practice. Your hands and eyes become coordinated to help you execute the skill to create works of art. Number two, it is a form of visual self expression. There is added satisfaction when you will be able to translate words into pictures, especially making artworks based from your mind's eye. Feelings and emotions are interpreted visually through the use of lines, texture, form, or color. It's given that art making automatically uses one's creativity in transforming your imagination into reality which you can call your own. Number 3. It teaches problem solving. Art making involves different steps and processes. They train you how to translate your vision into reality by solving problems in organizing the process and materials to achieve your goal. Number 4. It improves observational skills. In a text-heavy generation, art making encourages you to pause and not merely smell the flowers, 
but urges you to study the color of the petals, the leaves, the texture of the stem, and its overall form. You are obliged to see rather than just look in order for you to create a work of art. Number 5. It teaches interpersonal skills. In art workshops, especially if you work together with your colleagues, friends, or family, it encourages sharing and feedback of ideas. The opportunity to be involved in a collective effort in the process of art making improves one's ability in teamwork. Art making, which is collaborative, also builds trust and confidence when working with others. Number 6. It improves self-awareness. Knowing your personal strengths and weaknesses can be explored through art making. It teaches you who you are. Sometimes we are not aware that an artist lies within us until we give ourselves a chance to try. Such an experience opens up one's mind on how to handle emotions and direct them to more creative and artistic endeavors. Through art making, emotions can be expressed unexpectedly or directly from one's feelings through sensory activities involved in the process. It gives you a chance to explore your feelings that are positive and beneficial which may discourage negative emotions to prosper. Number 7. It improves communication skills. In general, art making is a form of communication aside from just a self-expression. It improves one's communication skills because art making provides the opportunity to open up and let one share his or her thoughts through creative pictorial, spoken, or written words. Number 8. It builds social connections and awareness. Art is not legit if it is not shared to others. Art making encourages discussions, showcases one's artistry and creativity through exhibits. Many people use art making to create awareness of certain societal issues to other people that can help promote positive change. Art making as a form of expression empowers the creator to air the truth, whether it's a personal issue or a societal issue. Number 9. It is a form of meditation. The practice of art making which involves hand, eyes, and mind coordination can bring you to a meditative state. The mere act of focusing your mind to a vision and translating it into a work of art promotes a form of relaxation from the stress of the outside world. Developing the ability to focus on your art making task and being able to control different distractions around you is perhaps one of the easily noticeable benefits of the meditative effect of art making. And number 10, it is a source of inspiration. Everybody wants to be inspired. Art making forces you to seek inspiration and discourages you to procrastinate. Art making gives premium to the importance of the process rather than the end. And along the way, such an inspiration to continue on the journey can be rewarded even before an artwork is finished. Talking about inspiration as the last entry, where can you find artistic and creative inspiration? Here are nine suggested sources for inspiration. Your home and family. Inside the home, there are so many things that can be sources of inspiration without even including the people living in it. The light streaming through a window, a bowl of fruits on a dining table, the garden, outside the home. Ordinary and mundane objects inside the home had been important sources of inspiration by master artists through the centuries. If material things inside your home can be sources of inspiration, the people who live there, your family, 
is also a source of inspiration. The face of your mother, father, or siblings may become your source of inspiration for portraiture, as well as your pet dog, cat, or goldfish may also become sources of inspiration for your art. Your community. Whatever kind of community you are living in, may it be in a bucolic rural area or in a noisy urban landscape, there are so many things that can be a source for art making. If you live in a rural community where farming is a common sight every day, may encourage you to make art inspired by farming, animals, plants, the rivers, or the sea. If you live in a highly urbanized area, you may be inspired to make art that documents street life or the social condition of people in general. Another is your own work itself. No matter what day job or part-time job that you do, the work experience that you have can be your source of inspiration for art making. If you are working as a teacher, your specialization can be the source of inspiration for your art making. For example, a science teacher can use her knowledge about biology in drawing and painting flowers or animals with technical accuracy. Your friends. Friends become important sources of inspirational ideas. Your friends may inspire you about the things that they do. If you have a friend who loves gardening, you may create an artwork that shows a beautiful garden of your friend or make a portrait of your friend. Works of other artists One of the shortcuts in learning a skill or appreciate art is to observe how artists work. This may be in the form of tutorials or workshops. You will be inspired if you will listen and learn from these artists when they share their artistic and creative journey. Observing how they create their artworks can inspire you to improve your art. Books Self-help books or tutorial books on art, whether physical or virtual, is full of inspirational ideas. Books are rich resources of inspiration for more ideas to flourish. Museums and Exhibits Bringing yourself to visit an art exhibit or to a collection of art pieces in a museum is a sure way to inspire your creativity and artistry to flow. Your Natural Environment Nature is the source of inspiration for art. But nature is not art. I bet you've heard about this quote many times already, but what does this mean? Art is not nature, because art is not natural. It is an artificial creation of man, even if it appears to be as close to nature or even exceeds nature. Nature is the absence of thought, but only becomes art if it is thought of, understood created and experienced. Natural art like bonsai, however, is an exception. And lastly, yourself. What if you haven't specifically found inspiration from any of the other nine sources? You turn the inspiration onto yourself. Open your sketchbook. Go to your art desk and start organizing your tools and materials. Hopefully, this act will stimulate your artistry and creativity. So those are the nine different sources for creative and artistic inspiration. If you have any questions or suggestions, please write your comments below. Your facilitators will gather your questions and I will answer your questions after this session. The most difficult step is how to start. I will share to you four tips on how to start your art making journey number one make a short-term and long-term commitment embarking on your art making journey will open new doors and windows of opportunity especially in making self-discovery so you have to make both short-term and long-term commitments short-term commitment 
is to make art making a hobby and a source of a relaxation activity. Making a long-term commitment involves venturing into the bigger arena to share your artwork to a bigger audience or become a professional artist. Number two, make it personal. Oftentimes, among us Filipinos, we hear walang personalan, but it does not promote commitment and passion. Art making is a personal struggle and must have a high level of personal ownership. We have to learn how to own our creations. We have to believe in our own power to create. Being personal about our passion gives self-respect and makes us uniquely us. Number three, assign yourself an art space. Art making needs focus and concentration for us to relax and distress. Thus, we need a personal space to give us focus and peace to create. It should be a space where we can work uninterrupted, relax, think, and just be ourselves and not worrying about other people. It should also be a space where we can leave our materials and supplies anytime and not worry that it will be lost or disarranged by someone else. It should be a space which we can easily access if we feel inspired to make art. It should be a space where we can see our skills and talent grow and develop through time. Look for a peaceful corner in your home or office that you can use as your art space. Professional artists usually build or rent an art studio. And the fourth tip is prepare your resources. If you are a first-timer in art making, you do not need to immediately splurge or invest big on your art supplies. You can start small by using whatever available materials that you can find in your home or office. Once you have started building your skill and self-confidence in art making, you can now start investing on the professional quality materials. Now we have reached this part of the webinar where I will show you three activities on how to express and draw, paint onto paper, or make a sculpture of your feelings. I will guide you with steps to express yourself and use art making as an outlet for your feelings. What art activities can teachers and professors as well as students use to relax and distress? Now, let's get started. Our first activity is how to draw your feelings. The suggested art materials are lead pencils, charcoal pencils, pastels, ballpoint pen, tube pen, brush, sketchbook, knitted eraser, rubber eraser, and cutter. First, you have to choose a comfortable space to make your artwork that is away from noise and other people. Before you start, first get in touch with your personal feelings and breathe. If you prefer to play music while you work, choose something with a relaxing mood. Adjust the volume of the music to a low level, just enough for you to hear the hints of the sound. Focus on a very specific sensation with the emotion. Try to visualize on the sensation in terms of visual design elements such as line, texture, value, size, shape, and colors. Now pick any drawing material of your choice in front of you. You may use one or more materials as you wish. Be spontaneous and just let your mind, emotions, eyes, and hands coordinate with each other. Do not be concerned about committing mistakes and avoid making any erasures. It is best not to stop very often. Just let the drawing experience flow.
After you have completed your artwork, view it at a distance of 3 to 6 feet away from you. Imagine that you are with the object that you've visualized and created. Ask the object what it wanted to tell you. You may write your thoughts in a journal. Give your artwork a title. The second activity is how to paint your feelings. The suggested materials that you need are watercolor set, brushes, mixing plate, lead pencil, kneaded eraser, and watercolor paper. Again, before starting on this activity, you have to first choose a comfortable space to make your artwork that is away from noise and other people. If you prefer to play music while you work, choose something with a relaxing mood. Adjust the volume of the music to a low level, just enough for you to hear the hints of the sound. Now, get in touch with your feelings and ask yourself, what feeling do you identify yourself as of the moment? Close your eyes and ask yourself if such feeling had a form, weight, temperature, texture, value, line, and color. What would it be like? Open your eyes and depict on paper using your brush and watercolor. Be spontaneous and just let your mind, emotions, eyes, and hands coordinate with each other. Do not be concerned about committing mistakes. It is best not to stop very often. Just let the painting experience flow. After you have completed your artwork, view it at a distance of 3 to 6 feet away from you. Ask yourself, what is difficult or frustrating about expressing yourself through art making? Ask yourself, what does the painting look like? Describe what the painting looks like by starting with, I am painting. You may write your feelings and thoughts on a piece of paper or in a journal. Now let's proceed to the third and final activity. The suggested materials are bars of modeling clay in yellow, red, blue, green, black, white, and a barbecue stick. First, go to your comfortable art space. Breath, relax, and get in touch with your feelings. Close your eyes and ask yourself if such feeling had a form, weight, temperature, texture, and color. What animal would you like to be as of the moment? Open your eyes and choose different colors of the modeling clay that you want to use. Shape the animal that you have envisioned by gradually building up layers of modeling clay until you have created the form of the animal. This is inductive sculpting or building by adding layers to create form.
Describe what the sculpture looks like by starting with the statement, I am sculpting. Why did you choose this kind of animal? How can you relate this animal to your feeling as of the moment? You may write your answer in a journal. You may also reuse the modeling clay or preserve your creation by varnishing it with clear nail polish. After watching the demonstration of the three art-making activities, you are now inspired and excited. The next step is to embark on your actual art-making experience. Here are some pointers on how to make art-making an enjoyable experience, especially for first-timers. First, daydream and build an artwork inside your mind before you render them on paper. This will develop your ability to visualize and plan with your mind's eye. Second, develop, hold on to, and expound a brilliant idea. Complete whatever you've started, no matter how long it has been. Third, invest on quality art materials to improve your art making and create artworks that are durable and can last a lifetime. Fourth, Start making small masterpieces and gradually progress on making something big. Fifth, do not always compare yourself to others and also do not always depend on other people's expectations. Sixth, do not procrastinate. Just stay focused and be positive about your ideas. Seventh, learn to empty your cup. Accept but also in return, share your ideas. Eighth, celebrate your little triumphs and successes because even some great artists started as failures. Ninth, do not be afraid to copy because even classical masters copy. However, strive to develop your unique and signature style. Do not be a copycat all your life. And tenth, do not be afraid to break the rules after you have mastered the fundamentals. So those are the 10 pointers that you may follow to make your art making journey an enjoyable experience. Thank you very much for following along this webinar. All of us are born creative and talented and all of us have the God-given gift to express ourselves through art. See you next time! Okay, I hope you enjoyed the presentation that I prepared for this morning. Um, as a wrap up for this uh, discussion, uh, the most important thing that we should remember when we'll embark uh, on art making to use it as a form of relaxation and, dis and for distressing is to 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 be able to really commit ourselves to to art making no so some people uh, says that it's why is it so difficult to start why is it that i have even making my first line or marking something on paper okay so uh, art cannot be accomplished if it's only up to thinking. It should be performed. So you have to pick up your pen and paper or brush. So don't, don't think so much about the outcome yet. So you just try to doodle and scribble or you buy yourself a sketchbook. And then uh, one important reminder for, for beginners is that when you will start yourself, when you will engage yourself into art making for relaxation, uh, don't treat your art making journey as work, but treat your art, art uh, making journey as play. No, so when when you think as when you think of art making as play, it will even give more stress. 
Okay? Art making should be play. It should not be work. So even myself, I, I, I want to surprise myself most of the time. I want to uh, come up with something unexpected. Uh, I, I want to be surprised by the results. No, but, but at the back of my mind, I, I am, I'm, I've already imagined what will be my output, what will be my vision. So um, for beginners, what you should do is when you have your journal and started making your scribbles and doodles, don't tear the pages. Don't crumple the pages of your sketch pad or don't crumple the piece of paper that where you have made your artwork. Keep it and uh, store it. Make it part of your collection. And eventually, um, when, when you will be so immersed in art, you won't notice it anymore. And when you will become a very good artist in the future, you will go back to your sketch pad and, or sketchbook and you will say to yourself, this is how I started. This, this is my journey. And uh, the written, the written, uh, the written um, journal that you have made uh, is actually a documentation of your feelings, um, your frustrations about, about your life and also uh, how, how, how you were able to solve these problems with art as your outlet. No? So um, whenever, we, whenever we use art for relaxation and distressing, um, we have to see to it that we are very open, no? we are very open to, to accept a new venture. No? So it's, it's, not, it's not because na, um, you do art, you're, you, you feel obliged, no? um, unless uh, you, you use art as, as a sideline or a profession. You, you really have to paint every day and draw every day. But uh, in this lesson, um, I'm encouraging you not to oblige yourself, not to oblige yourself to, to really uh, work your way. No? So use art making as a way of distressing. So if you have only your free time, no? so I'm not trying to say that uh, you have to do an artwork every day. Uh, most of us have our work and we're busy and it's only during our free time that we have we have time to do scribbles or or do sketches or or painting so um but eventually if you will be able to integrate art making into your time and it it, it will be part of your regular schedule then who knows you you will be you will be improving yourself and eventually people will will notice most especially your family will notice the effort that you're, you're doing, your office mates will notice the efforts that you're doing about on, on art making and perhaps they will invite you to hold an exhibit or uh, invite you to, to post your paintings over uh, Facebook or Instagram or whatever social platform there is. No? So, and uh, one of uh, the added pluses of being involved in art making is that um, eventually when you become good you will be able to also uh, consider art as an added form of uh, income no so in this uh, in this time of the pandemic people are people clubs people doesn't know how to earn extra income because some of their uh, sidelines are were affected by the pandemic. Uh, they cannot sell wares outside or go directly to people to, to sell their products. But through art making, you can actually build a portfolio and you will build followers and eventually people will love your art and they will, they will buy your art. No? So uh, in this day and age we're in, um, we can uh, go online and show what we do. Um, we, we, we don't have to uh, go on a face-to-face -face interaction. There are a, there are a lot of uh, exhibitions uh, that are virtual. No? I have seen a lot of my friends uh, conduct uh, uh, virtual art exhi exhibits. And um, 
this is a way of um, this is a way of trying to give us a give us a chance to continue to to stay positive even in this in this pandemic now so let art be your instrument let art be your instrument to share yourself to others no let art according to you it's a form of self expression and uh, and according to the poll the survey it's you me most of you said that art is me so this session will hopefully open up your minds and hearts that art is an alternative to make you relax and distress in this in this time okay so i'm going to share to you um okay i'm encouraging you actually to share your artworks through uh, our google classroom okay please try to see the code of our google classroom i'm encouraging you to upload your your drawings or artwork in our google classroom today so i can so that, that you can share whatever you have you have made uh, i i don't require you to really do it now but perhaps after the session and after our q and a or during your vacant time today any time today you can upload uh, what you have made uh, based from uh, what you have learned from from this session okay so for the q and a i will welcome now your questions Thank you so much, Sir Jude, for sharing us with, uh, with us your knowledge, your expertise, your passion for the arts. As always, sir, and dami po namin natutunan mula sa inyo. So, guys, kayo po, ano po yung major takeaway nyo from Sir Jude, our session today? Sige nga po, please, please let us know and comment down below our comment section box, okay? Sir, and dami nagpapasalamat sa ano natin. Yeah, you're welcome. Yes. Sabi po dito ni, ng isang nag-message, um, sabi niya po, hold on, let me just get it. Ang daming na, nanonood sa atin, sir, from Tagum, from SDO, from Marawi City, Nueva Ecija, ayan, from, from all over the Philippines. And ito po, ito. Ayan. From Jojo Rington, sabi niya po, Good morning to all. This is really great. I will share, share this to my daughters who loves painting, but still with little knowledge. I am so fascinated with, with this webinar. Thank you so much, Professor Drew. This is a great help for anyone who wants to de-stress. Thank you so much, Repel BLRC. You always give us the best out. Oh, thank you so much for that uh, comment din po. Ayan, sir, ang dami nagpapasalamat. Yeah, I'm so happy that uh, many people are also happy about my presentation. Um, I cannot really uh, share many, many samples of my work because of uh, the, the allocated time uh, that was given to me. Uh, but uh, if LRC is still interested to come up with another um, series that I can also share other aspects of what I know about art making. Okay, sir. And meron tayong isang comment dito, sir, from Edgardo Galindez. That has been one of my personal frustrations. I can't draw. Perhaps you have some words of wisdom for Sir Edgardo Galindez, Sir Jude? Okay. Uh, sir Edgardo, um, my suggestion is um, drawing, to start a drawing, there are only three to remember. So you grab a pencil and paper. If you have a pencil and paper right now, you can get a pencil and paper. You draw a small circle, a small square, and a small triangle. Okay, these are what we call as the three basic universal shapes. So it's said that these three basic universal shapes, if you combine them or you can use them, if you use them singly, you can come up with anything under the sun. You can draw anything under the sun using a circle, square, and triangle. So give it a try. So get a pencil and paper or ball pen and paper beside you and you try. So for example, uh, you try to juxtapose the shape. When you say juxtapose, you try to relate the shape of a circle to an everyday object. So you, you say, what is the, sh the, the basic shape of the sun? 
Okay. So the basic shape of the sun is a circle. So how will I make the rays? So the rays is in the shape of a triangle. So you attach the small triangles around the circle, then you have your sun. So by trying to combine these different shapes, um, it will try to loosen you up. It will try to um, erase the fear of not knowing how to draw. No, as long as as long as you know how to draw a line, it's it starts with a line. No, so drawing starts with with a line. And sometimes some artist says, "Nah, you can even make form out of shading without necessarily making a line. You can just rub your pencil on on a piece of paper and." you can come up with a shape and form out of the shadows or out of the shading of the pencil. I hope my suggestion helps. All right. I hope that helps you, Sir Edgardo. Sir, another question is from, actually, from Franz Mariel. I think na mentioned nyo po ito sa, sa inyong presentation or sa video presentation kanina, but I'll just uh, throw it here. Sabi niya po, <clears throat> I used to cross-stitch as a hobby when I was in high school. I wanted to do it again, but I don't feel like it is my own because I'm only following a pattern. How do I begin with drawing or painting if I am not skilled at it? Okay. Um, personally, when I was in high school, uh, in our home economics class, we were taught how to do cross-stitch. And um, I, I was able to make a good cross-stitch. And I can relate it to others who, who, who started with this cross-stitch generation. And uh, until now, cross-stitching is, is very popular. But if you want to shift to uh, drawing or painting using the pencil and the brush, um, the first thing that you should do is try to experience the mark-making process. Because uh, in the cross-stitch, cross you're using a needle and a thread or a bid or whatever accessory that you use for cross-stitching. So the best way is uh, grab a pencil and paper and then just scribble. Experiment on the different thickness of the line. So uh, you practice whether you can make a straight line, a curvy line, and uh, you try to come up with different shapes. Don't, don't think of the accuracy of, of the shape, just mind flow. Just don't stress yourself about it, and eventually you'll be surprised. Just like what I did in the, uh, the, the in the demonstration of activity one, you notice that I just made scribbles, and then after those scribbling of lines, I I placed color inside. Then I I I provided textures. So just be very spontaneous. Don't don't be too stiff. Uh, cross stitching is a very stiff process, and it involves uh, over accuracy because if you miss a line or if you miss a color, the pattern of the cross stitch won't be followed. No, so, and and or the way you pull the thread, the whole thing will be just be torn or destroyed, and you'll be frustrated. But in drawing, no. If you're not satisfied, you can you can lightly erase or just leave it alone. Then draw another one in one corner of the paper. If not if you're not satisfied, you draw at the back of the paper or come up with another fresh paper. So that's it. No? So it's not very exacting and it's cheap. No? A piece of paper and, and pencil is cheaper than a cross-stitch pattern. No? How, how much do we spend for, for a cross-stitch thread or needle or cloth? No? So, and a pencil and paper is just very easy to find. It's, you can just house or office. You don't really have to go out, just like in this time of the pandemic, you're, you'll be looking for supplies. Just use whatever uh, drawing uh, implements or materials you can find in your house. So I hope I answer your question, ma'am. All right. I hope that answers your question, Franz. Another question, sir, is from Nilin Onavilla. Sabi niya po, sir, nahihirapan po ako mag-combine o mag-combine ng colors in painting. Any tips? Okay. So, in in color combination, especially if you're if you want to try painting, you start first with the basic colors. Uh, you you buy poster paint or you buy a watercolor set. So, when you have those materials, don't 
touch the other colors first. You experiment with the basic colors. What are the basic col or the or the primary colors? That it's yellow, red, blue, and sometimes uh, in in some color wheels they include black and white. No, so um, watercolors actually. I'm just trying to give you a backgrounder of watercolors because if it's it's actually an introductory material for people who are interested to do painting. Um, uh, when you start watercolor painting, there are two kinds. One is the opaque. The opaque type of watercolor is what we call as gouache or poster paint. The second type of watercolor is the transparent or translucent type of watercolor paint. So usually as a beginner, I encourage you to start so that you won't be frustrated. You start with poster color or gouache that are opaque. So when you say opaque, when you, when you commit mistake, you can just cover the previous layer with another color and it will be covered. So why is it opaque? Because there is an additive in poster color or gouache that tries to make the colors thick and uh, the colors beneath uh, won't show through. In translucent watercolor, which most professionals use, is that when you, for example, you, you apply yellow and you allow the yellow tran uh, trans transparent watercolor to dry first, then you put an overlay of uh, blue. The yellow beneath will show through and the resulting color will be green. So we, I think in elementary, we had been oriented that if you mix yellow and blue in the color wheel, then you will come up with green, the secondary color. So one tip also is to review your color wheel, the 12 basic colors of the prime color system. Um, or you, may, you start color mixing using the color wheel. So it's the best way to practice uh, color mixing. Some, some artists say, don't spend too much time making a color wheel. But for me as a workshop instructor for a long, long time, I find it that students are more comfortable using the brush and knowing the correct consistency between water and pigment if they make the color wheel. So with color wheel, you'll be able to distinguish how much colors will you use. No? So use primary colors to build your secondary then secondary, combine it with your primary to come up with your tertiary. So when you're confident with your color mixing ability, you know how to, to mix the watercolor, the, the right consistency, the percentage of water, the kind of paper that should be used. Um, I, I use watercolor paper, which is uh, thicker than or, our ordinary paper. And you can buy watercolor paper. Uh, I'm not endorsing a, a bookstore here. I want to be safe. but you can find many bookstores in the mall that sells watercolor paper by pads or by sheets, no? And they come in different thickness. So uh, the thicker the watercolor paper, it won't buckle, but there's a technique. When you use watercolor paper, you tape the corners before using it. Uh, for bigger watercolor papers, what we do is that we soak the watercolor paper for about five minutes. Uh, for example, watercolor papers that are 300 or 200 GSM, no, th this, these are thick, almost cardboard light in thickness. So we soak them. So what's the purpose of soaking? It tries to loosen the fibers, the paper fibers of watercolor paper. Then I lay it on a ply board, a plywood, a coated plywood. So I paint first the plywood with white enamel so that the water won't seep into the, to the plywood. And the plywood, because we know that I would have preservatives. Now, so um, we, we try to coat that one first, let it dry, then place your wet watercolor paper there. Then secure the sides with uh, watercolor tape or paper tape. No? So it's, it's, it's kind of a technical way, but for a beginner, you can just tape your watercolor paper or tape your cartolina or bond paper with masking tape, and you're good to go. Uh, the purpose of taping your paper is that water buckles the paper as it dries. No? So it tries to pull the fibers back to its normal position once it dries. So it, it buckles. So you will be frustrated sometimes doing watercolor painting wherein there's a lot of pulls and creases there. So to avoid that, you have to tape. And of course, 
um, the only way to be confident in color mixing using paints is that you need to really practice. Practice makes perfect. No? So you cannot just always imagine, I can't mix colors. How can you master coloring if you won't give it a try? Thank you, Sir Jude. Okay, that's it. Yeah, thank you, Sir Jude. Actually, yung major takeaway ko sa inyo, sir, excuse me, is that uh, sabi nyo po ay don't compare yourself to others. Kapag mag yes. ng art, don't compare. Kasi probably, baka mas maganda yung kanya. So, I remember when we had our session sa mga senior citizen, <laughs> it was really empowering yung tinuro mo sa amin yung nag-workshop ka sa amin na how to make our own art kami muna yung tinuruan mo so that we could assist the senior citizens. And they were so happy. At another thing na sinabi mo, sir, is don't be afraid to copy, which is <laughs> also doing. Kasi you need inspiration, di ba, sir? Yes, yes. At first, you, you will have to copy some. And then later on, you will develop your own personality dun sa artwork mo. So yes. thank you so much, sir, Jude, for those. Thank you, thank uh, you. Uh, advice. And then yes. we have another question, sir, from Ati Anli, who is now back to her first love, which is drawing and painting. Saan daw po ba pwedeng makabili ng malalaking canvas? Kasi daw po maliliit po yung nasa online shops. Saan daw po pwede oh. Okay, thank you for that question. That's also, that was also my question when I was starting with painting, especially in the province that we are far away from the big art suppliers that uh, sells canvases. So what we should do is we visit a textile shop, yung ano, yung a store that sells uh, cloth. And when you go there, you ask whether they have what they call as a canvas or a katsa. No, we call it katsa in Cebuano mm -hmm. or canvas. It comes in different thickness, and usually we use the medium thickness because if you use the the thin canvas, you will be frustrated because the paint will, will, will seep through. So if it's too thick, it's used for tents and also for um, making sofa. So it's so thick that you cannot staple it or make, secure it at the back of your plyboard or frame. So the medium thick uh, thickness, uh, the medium thick canvas is the most ideal, especially for beginners. So what we do is we buy uh, uh, katsa or canvas or cotton duck canvas um, or of course uh, there, there are also uh, canvases that you can get out of uh, rice flour sack no? so before uh, before uh, painting was so became popular here in our place um, there are no stores that are selling um, 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 uh, professional canvases. So we, we instead buy uh, flower sacks from bakeries and we wash it and we hang it and we trim it. So that's the cheapest way. So um, when, when you use, uh, when we buy canvas, it's, it's, it's different from the commercial one because the commercial one is already primed. So what we do is, for example, you're interested to make a painting, uh, an 18 by 24 inches painting. So usually, uh, uh, a cotton duck canvas or katsa is uh, 45 to 60 inches in weave. No? So they, they either sell it in yards or in meters. So you try to imagine what kind of, what size of painting you're going to produce. So as a beginner, as a, if you're a beginner, start with uh, 10 by 15 or small format canvases, then you gradually make bigger ones. No, uh, size paintings can can be done uh, using the katsa no so there there are even uh, stores that sell customized sizes wherein you can make very big murals out of them so when when you use these canvases you need to stretch this on a, ply, a piece of plywood a marine plywood about one fourth inch thick so that uh, it won't buckle so you use marine plywood because if you use ordinary plywood it will buckle as the canvas, primer dry. So you have to staple the, the canvas on the plywood using staple wire at the back. And then once it's stretched, so stretching starts in the middle and going out. No, So you don't start stretching or start stapling on the corn, in the corner, then going to the, towards us. It should be out so that 
uh, the tension is from the middle of the, the canvas out, then after you staple that one, you apply two coats of semi-gloss latex, white latex paint. It's water soluble. And then let it dry. Then you sand it lightly. Then apply another third layer of, of latex paint and let it dry. Then you're good to go. You can use the canvas already without splurging. I think uh, uh, ready-made canvases, professional canvases nowadays, uh, sizes 18 by 24 or 24 by 30 will cost you 600, 900, or 1,000 pesos, now, depending on the brand, especially the imported ones. But uh, there are local ones that uh, I, I say good only, for, good only for practice, but not really for, for, for work that you can, you can sell in the future or will really last a lifetime. So that's my only advice. You go to stores, don't really depend on, on the ready-made canvases. Thank you, sir, for that very practical tip, lalo na ngayong pandemic po. Ano? Yes, yes. You can still make art from that. So, hindi mo kailangan talagang gumastos ng money. Yes, you don't have to really spend a fortune buying expensive canvases. Yes, sir. Okay, we have here a comment, sir. Actually, ang daming comment from LJ Perlada. Thank you for the inspiring talk, sir. I am an aspiring artist, but I am struggling with insecurities because I'm surrounded by people better, better than me in art. How do you beat this feeling or feeling of being insecure with my art? Okay. Just like what I've said uh, in my presentation, uh, you don't have to compare yourself with others no? or to others. Um, when I was young, uh, when I was a young artist like you, uh, just like what I've said, I was exhibiting at the age of 17. I participated uh, painting exhibits at the age of 17. Uh, what I did was I, I, I just make a painting and do my thing, but I try to accept criticisms. Okay, the main problem with aspiring artists is they don't accept criticisms or suggestions. So you have to remember that there are people who, who were ahead of you. There are people who, had, who have trained ahead of you, or there are people that are one step ahead of you when it comes to experience and skill. But tell yourself that you will also arrive at that stage in your life. So don't try to compare yourself. And if ever they have criticisms on your work, try to say thank you. Thank you for giving me criticisms. As long as the criticism is constructive. If it's destructive, still try to welcome them, but tell them that um, I am, I'm trying my best to be like you. You are my idol. You, you are the people whom I look up to. So sometimes people are discouraged because they can't accept criticisms. But these criticisms, if you convert them into something positive. Make it, this negative criticisms, this bad reviews, make it as an inspiration for you to become better. Because who knows that these people who are criticizing you will also look up at you when you will reach that stage of your success. Thank you so much for that very wise word, sir. So I hope nagkaroon ka ng inspiration, LJ Perlada. And sir, meron dito isa, sabi naman niya, si Divine Mama Real. Thank you po, sir. I will share this to my other friends that who are currently suffering from stress and now I will be able to express my emotions and feelings through art. Thank you very much. And then another comment, sir, sa fe Facebook Live pa rin natin. My four-year-old son, uh, this is from Lenny Castillo Mutom. My four-year-old son watched your presentation with me. He wanted to say he loves your paintings. Your presentation was very clear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Another one from Lani Mendoza de los Reyes. I am a MAPE teacher in high school. How can I encourage my students to try on drawing? Some of them don't know how to draw. Okay. Uh, as a math teacher, 
And this is what I usually share to my special program in the arts because this SPA program is, this SPA is actually a program for MAPE, no? Um, for example, in your class, ma'am, um, you give your students pieces of paper and let them prepare pencil. So granting that you don't know the skill level of your students, granting that all of them, uh, granting that most of them do not know how to draw. Just tell them or just instruct them to draw anything that comes into their mind. So that's the first step. And then tell them that when they draw, it should be something that they feel they're comfortable drawing. So some students will say, I can't even draw a circle. I can't even draw, et cetera, et cetera. So sometimes these kind of students are, even before they lay their pencil on the paper, they're already negative. So what, what is the most effective thing to do? It's trying to encourage, okay? Encourage teamwork, no? So in, in, in a big class wherein you want to teach students and you have given them paper and pencil and, and some are still not doing their work, you can group them into, into groups. You mix uh, these students that are not very good with drawing with students who are good in drawing and let the, their colleagues tutor them, no? Because you cannot just, you cannot easily see who among them are really that good or unless na you have come up with an evaluation already, but that's the way to encourage students, no? So just let them draw. And then for the second part, you tell them, I want you to go out of the classroom and draw a tree. Okay, let them draw a tree. So, so who among us does not know how to draw a tree? Okay, so let them draw a tree and you will see how they in interpret something that they see actually. No? So sometimes people will say, it's difficult for me to draw because I have to imagine so what if there's a model in front of them like a tree? And you will see that these students will gradually open up. So don't shock students into coming up with very complicated projects. So little by little, little by little, they will grow their interest on, on drawing. And then um, for, for, for MAPE, I, I think uh, the most of the the most common thing that I do with map, map with my MAPE students is I tell them to um, read more, watch YouTube videos, or um, read books of, about artists, especially backgrounds of artists, so that they will be inspired. Thank you, Sir Drew. I agree. You just have yeah. to let them draw. Actually, Sir. When I attended um, a graphic design course in Coursera, that's what they did. Parang meron lang uh, parang apple. From that apple, pwede ka nang mag yes. You just have to experiment. And it's so liberating na, ah, pwede pala yun. Akala ko sa art kasi, sir, parang confined. And yeah. You have to explore. You really have to experiment. You really have to try it out. All kinds of, anong tawag niyo dun, sir? Kung anong kung yan ba ay um, physical art, kung yan ba ay digital, kung yan ba ay photography. Yes, yes. Like that. So I agree with you, sir. Okay? Thank you, thank you. Going back, sir, sa ating mga comment section, ito naman. Nagpapasalamat, sir, si Marian De Leon. Thank you so much daw, sir, for sharing. Thank you, Marian. I hope Prof. Jude can have an online tutorial on the basics of arts for beginners. <laughs> Meron ka daw ba, sir, online tutorial? Right now, honestly, I can't do uh, uh, with with the pandemic. Some of our classes are done in modular, and some also virtual. So uh, there are students who enrolled uh, via a virtual class. And then, if I come up with this online tutorial as as of these days, I might be stressed <laughs> because because of because. Uh, because of uh, the added responsibility, but of course I'm positive about it. Um, I will I will come up with uh, an online tutorial in the future. Uh, of course, all of us are adjusting uh, with with this. But um, 
what I would like to suggest is that if uh, uh, LRC will come up with another series wherein it's just focused on, on art making, uh, how to step by step, for example, one session for drawing only, one session dedicated only for painting. So uh, right now, what, what we're doing is, this is just an introduction. No? So pang abrigana, we, we're trying to open the, the, the minds, hearts, and emotions of people that art is one way of distressing and giving them uh, an alternative for relaxation. But if people are interested to really uh, learn new skills, especially on drawing and painting, then perhaps LRC can organize another session for them. Wow, that's so very generous of you, sir. I hope that uh, pag-usapan po natin yan, sir, kung paano po natin mawag. Yes, yes. Another, sir, siguro uh, basahin ko na lang po yung mga last comments dito. Chris De Jesus, there is really magic in arts. I always feel that every time I do like painting, coloring books, junk arts, and doodling. Uh, thank you very much, Prof. Jude. Ayan. You're welcome. Nagpapasalamat din po si Irene Barredo. Thank you so much din daw po. Si Maribel Malig Serrano. Thank you so much, Sir Jude. And kay Karil Vim Serna, sabi niya po, after this session, I got inspired to make another artwork in a long time. Sir Jude was our advisor before sa Banaag Visual Arts Group. Walang kupas talaga. Wow. Hi, thank you, Karil. Ayan. Best regards to your father. Ayan. Thank you din daw po. Sabi ni Sarah Jane Baterina, si Daz uh, Palermo. Uh, salamat, Sir Jude. You let me do my best in doing my paintings. Also for the tips, you're one of the best. Yeah, thank you very much, Daz. And shout out lang ako ha sa uh, Visual Arts Association of Bye Bye City. And also shout out ko din si Rolex, Sir Rolex Pihilig, who is my uh, media production assistant for helping me with this yes. presentation this morning. Thank you. Thank you po um, for making this possible, Sir Jude, and lahat po ng iyong team na kasama. Yeah, yeah. Ano? My hardworking team. <laughs> okay. okay, from Ingrid Hombroeno de Jesus. Excuse me. Sir, I feel a bit disconnected with artwork since I do digital art. And there yes. are some people commenting that digital art is not real art since it's not made like the traditional paintings. It's a bit discouraging. Um, I can share something to you about that. I have also a student who have received the same comments. Actually, digital art and uh, manual type of art making are the same. They just differ in the kind of medium. No? Actually, when you make digital art, you can print your artwork into something that you can frame. No, But it doesn't matter. I also do digital art. But since my topic right now is unplugged, non-digital procedures, then I cannot show you how digital art is, is made. But if you are, uh, if you are really interested, you can convert the same concept into digital, no? Um, here in the Department of Development Communication, shout out ko rin ha sa mga colleagues ko ngayon na nanonood, and also to our president, uh, Dr. Edgardo Tulin of the Visayas State University. Sir, thank you very much for, for giving your faculty and staff the, the chance to be very creative. We have a very creative young staff here who are also involved with our media team, Derek and Jed and the rest of the media production team. And these people are also into digital art. No? So we have transcended from the manual to digital and it doesn't matter what medium you're using as long as you can express yourself, show people that this is what you love, prove to them that this is not a hindrance to whatever creative endeavor that you want to accomplish. Thank you so much, Sir Jude. Actually, the only reason why we use unplugged or non-digital activities is because during the pandemic until now, yes. we're used to the, the screen. So we just wanted to like, like have a break. But uh, yeah, tama si Sir talagang art is still art. Uh, kahit ano pang form yan. I agree with you, Sir. Mm -hmm. 
All right. I guess, sir, um, that's all of the questions. Maybe we will just be having your message, sir, to our participants, especially to our students and teachers joining the webinar. So, any yes. And, sir. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm very happy that this, uh, that, that this webinar was organized, and I'm so thankful, and I want to congratulate all the attendees for participating, and I'm so happy that you have given your, your very good comments on this webinar, and of course, I'm also thankful with LRC for their very facilitative and accommodating uh, staff, and also most especially to Mam Benj, who is also my, my professor, and of course, advisor to, to uh, in, my, in my graduate advisory course. And um, last, before I end my, my, my talk, um, one of the most important thing that encourages people to do their art is the support of the community. And I'm so happy that in our city, right now, uh, when we established the Visual Arts Association of Bye Bye City, when, when I presented the idea that the city should encourage the youth and virtually all people in, 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 in different sectors, that they should be engaged in, in art. No? Um, I was so happy that the LGU through the mayor are our, our city mayor, uh, Mayor Boying Kari, immediately approved a funding for a free art workshop for teachers teaching special program in the arts for 15 different schools. And this is a, this is a way of, of saying that if there is support from our family, community, and um, our LGUs, a lot of people will be given the chance to really appreciate art and use art as a way of expressing themselves and giving them solace from, from the different pressures that we encounter. May it, not, may it be not only from the pandemic, but our different concerns in life. All right, thank you so much, Sir Jude. Yeah. And may humahabu, sir, si Teresa Camiling Mendoza. Sabi niya, thank you for this webinar. It reinforces how art can be used in therapy. I am an occupational therapist and we use simple art activities for our clients. Yeah, it's really backed by studies. Madaming studies po ang nagsasabi na talagang um, art is really uh, therapeutic, lalong-lalo na sa ating mental health. All right, so there yes. you have it, guys. That's proper. Yes. Third Noni A. you. Thank you so much, sir. And now we would like to take this opportunity. Our team, LRC, would like to take this opportunity to thank our speaker for his valuable time. So to award the Certificate of Appreciation, may I kindly recognize our beloved director, Dr. Benjamin Apollo G. Flor. Let me just kindly read a citation. University of the Philippines Los Banos Learning Resource Center presents the Certificate of Appreciation to Jude Noni A. Salis for serving as resource speaker in the second session on the magic of art therapy, learn how to chillax using art activities in the unplugged, relax, de-stress, and recharge using non-digital activities webinar series held today, October 7, 2020, given the seventh day of, the, of October 2020 at the Learning Resource Center, UPLB College Laguna, signed Benjamina Pola G. Flor, our director. Thank you very Hi. much. Hi, Sir Jude. Thank you Hi, so much for taking time and being with us today. And yeah. uh, just to uh, tell everyone, yung napapansin ninyong uh, bulaklakan, I think that's bouquet of paradise ba, Sir Jude? That came from Sir Jude, no? So, nasa LRC yan. So, if you want to see the full picture, you can go to LRC and uh, look at it and cherish the picture. So, thank you so much for that sharing. And I'm, we're open to have an art course. No? Art course, maybe, ang sabi nga ni Sir Jude, ay basic, no? So, basic drawing, basic painting. Probably, those will be a part of the sessions. 
So ako naman, I'm into cross-teaching. So if, tignan niyo yung background ko, that's the last supper on the wall. Um, kita niyo ba? That's the last supper on the wall. Tapos to naman sa side ko is also a, uh, a cross-teach that I did mga years ago. No, years ago na ito. And I think I have around, siguro mga 10, 10 cross stitches. Pero iba yung, iba yung sarap siguro ng painting kasi, or drawing because uh, you start from scratch. So, so cross stitching, you already have a pattern, then you have a thread, and uh, what you're going to create is already pre no, preset, it's uh, dictated. So it's not really siguro that um, satisfying compared to uh, expressing your feelings into something concrete. And I think that is more uh, satisfying no, for an artist to come up with. And I'm very happy that Sir Jude uh, has given his time and his talent in sharing to us what he knows. And I hope you uh, submit your samples to the Google Classroom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably we could have a separate uh, Google Classroom as well for the basic uh, training. Nako, yes. dapat pag basic training, medyo ibang usapan na to. Ano, Sir Jude? You will have uh, <laughs> materials and all of that. Yeah, they have to prepare their materials. Yeah, the materials. So medyo hands-on na. And you have to submit also your outputs after the session. Yes, so siguro ma mahaba-haba na yung ating session. And we hope that everyone could share their time and chill out. <coughs> thank you so much, Ma'am Benj. Again, thank you <coughs> for being with us today. Now for the evaluation of the session, please do not forget the, uh, to answer the evaluation form after the webinar to receive your e-certificate of appreciation or participation rather. Your comments and suggestions will be deeply appreciated by our team. The evaluation link, again, will be sent only to those who successfully registered for the event. And you have until 7 p.m. today to send in your responses. Kindly give us at least 48 hours to generate your certificates, which will be sent to your email too. Again, more than the certificates, we hope you gain valuable insights from our second session of the Unplugged webinar series. And just a reminder for our next session, third session of Utayo. Um, join us again, guys, for the third session of the Unplugged entitled uh, The Art of Journaling. How to start journaling to regain focus and motivation with Ms. Ida Torres of OMF, OMF Lit, Lit Incorporated. That will be on Monday, October 12, 2020, same time, 10 in the morning. So let's take advantage of this opportunity to refresh and do good for our souls. Attend all our sessions to find ways to unburden ourselves from the uh, overwhelming responsibilities that we have right now. Sabi nga, di ba? Find inner peace and embrace your awesomeness, oh, di ba? So at this point, we would like to recognize and thank our team, hashtag Team LRC and hashtag Unplugged Team, headed, of course, by our director, Ma'am Benji, with the support of our Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, Ma'am Portia J. Lapitan. On our technical side is our University Research Associate, Joshua Michael J. Jonas, and our Webinar Director, Online Production Director, Direct Prof. Mark Lester M. Chico. And gusto lang din po namin magpasalamat kay Sir Mo Lianco kasi po sa GKNB mag-online learning session po namin uh, kinuha yung idea ng unplug. So sa kanya po galing itong um, uh, parang advice to do uh, relax, de-stress, and recharge using non-digital activities. May we also thank two uh, of our other members of Team LRC Si Tita Allen po and Kuya Iwok, hindi man namin sila nakakasama or nakikita dito sa webinar. Kasama po namin sila sa uh, lahat po ng aming programa. Tulong-tulong uh, po ang buong LRC sa mga programs po ng LRC. So once again, a big thank you, Sir Jude, our very, our very talented speaker for this morning. I guess that's it for today. This has been your moderator. Cheryl Hermosa Ebron, guys, just a reminder, this goes out to everyone, students, staff, 
professionals, but most especially our teachers, professors, and educators. Self-care is not a luxury. It is a necessity. You cannot pour from an empty cup. You cannot give what you do not have. So take care of yourself first. Fill your love tank because when you take time to replenish our soul, it allows us to serve others from the overflow. Self-care means giving the world the best of you instead of what's left of you. So once again, thank you for joining us today. We look forward to having you with us for another refreshing session on Wednesday. So bye now. Bye for now, guys. Keep safe and God bless you all. Bye.